Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have my 1999 Ford Ranger. Okay, and the AC has, uh, it cycles on and off, on and off, on and off, sometimes when it's warmed up. So what I'm gonna do is change the high pressure limit switch and I'm gonna change the low pressure limit switch. And I'm gonna do that as a troubleshooting technique and I'm gonna go to, go to the, the junks, junkyard to see if I can find any of those. Because it's just to see if that fixes it because all the pressures are good and the AC is working great. It's only when it's at idle it does that and it cycles on and off, on and off. And if you have this type of trouble, stick with me and we'll show you how to change these when we come back. Okay, so here we are at the junkyard. I found a low pressure switch. And uh, what's cool about these is it's 17 millimeter. All right, so find the 17. You're gonna take it off. And what should happen with your other car, your car with all the free, uh, Freon in it, refrigerant, is there should be a, a little pusher inside here. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a Schrader valve. And what pushes on that Schrader valve is that yellow bit right there. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. So hopefully whenever I have a pressurized system, when I take that Schrader valve, or when I take this off, it's not gonna evacuate my whole system. So we'll see. But as you can see, when you take the sensors out of these systems, they're designed to be able to allow you to change the sensor without messing up the system. See inside? You don't see inside. Check it out. See that Schrader valve? That protects all your coolant from coming out. I'm sorry, all of your uh, refrigerant from coming out. And then there's a little pusher inside there. Okay guys, pardon the music, I'm still at the uh, salvage yard. But look, I busted this loose. It's still under pressure. Watch. It pops the O-ring just a little bit, but it's still good. So let's uh, thread the new one on. New to me, on. We're just gonna check this on the ride home, see if it still behaves the same way. Give it a little, give it a little tighten there. And reconnect. And we'll do the same thing for the low, low pressure side. There's this, there's the old high pressure. And then the low pressure side's gonna be right here. Let's go ahead and bust that loose right now. All right, 17 millimeter. Okay, busting it loose. Oh, it's already loose. All right, let's see if this pops out a bunch of Whoa, 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 a little bit. Okay, not too bad. All right, so that kind of... <laughs> All right, I'm fighting with it now. Okay. So it threaded on. Make sure the O-ring isn't popped out, and that's what I had to do. I had to do it a couple of times so the O-ring wasn't popping out. All right, we'll try on the way home. But as you can see, I didn't lose all my coolant, uh, all my uh, refrigerant. So uh, yeah, we'll get back and I'll tell you how the drive home worked. So in the end, that didn't fix the trucks. Uh, AC going in and out, in and out. So uh, at least you were able to see how to take off your high and low pressure switches and aren't afraid to actually do that because most of them, if not all of them, have a, um, a Schrader valve inside. Uh, I've noticed also, uh, whenever, whenever I unplug the idle air control valve, it makes this problem worse. So I'm wondering, is there a connection between the idle air control valve and the surging AC compressor? Or if I have a broken wire somewhere? Until next time, folks, I'll see you next time on I Just Fix It Myself, and we'll see what else we can fix.